Sage grouse are intricately linked to sagebrush habitats. Sage grouse depend on the presence of sagebrush to survive. The quality and quantity of sagebrush has declined over the last 50 years so that only about half of the suitable habitat once present in the historical range of sage grouse is still intact. Today, North Dakota encompasses a small portion of the sage grouse habitat in the nation. This habitat, about 490 square miles, is in Golden Valley, Bowman, and Slope counties. As far as sage grouse habitat goes, we're standing in the prime of some of it. This would be what we call our core area. Um, the range spreads, as I said, over the western half of Bowman and Slope counties. And the core is with a, within an area three miles around each lek site. Sage grouse habitat requirements, like other wildlife, include food, cover, water, and space. The bird uh, uh, nests close to where they lek. Lekking sites are areas that the birds dance in spring. They have drumming grounds, they come in, they dance, they display, uh, the males display, then the females come in, uh, breeding takes place, and then they all nest within about a uh, mile and a half to three miles of the lekking site. That habitat area and brooding area would need to provide for them uh, all the things that they need, water, grasslands, especially sage. In the case of sage, they're looking typically for big sage, but will use the silver sage. They, they brood in areas that are a little bit moister, so they like uh, riparian zones or areas with a little extra moisture in the landscape where water will run in and the grass is growing a little more vigorous. And they need a lot of insects. The, brood have, the broods need insects in order to get the protein that they need to survive and grow and, 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 and come off uh, to, to make it through the first uh, growing season and into winter. Winter habitat is, is very similar to the summer habitat in that the big sage has to be present. However, in the winter time, their the diet is basically 100% big sage leaves. According to the North Dakota Sage Grouse Management Plan, the amount of suitable sage grouse habitat in North Dakota has been reduced by approximately 40% since 1950. Habitat fragmentation is considered a primary factor in this reduction. Preserving habitat is important for the sage grouse because the more fragmentation that you get, the fewer birds you're going to have. If you fragment the landscape with uh, fences, power lines, roads, cropland, oil wells, those type of uh, uh, fragmentation uh, issues or concerns have an impact on the sage grouse. Um, some species, for instance the fre pheasant, will be able to do really well on, on introduced grasses. They'll be able to do very well on tree plantings. They do well with uh, cropping in, 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 on their, on, in their habitat, in their range. Whereas sage grouse is, is the opposite of that. Uh, it's important to preserve their habitat in large chunks. Uh, if you add trees to the landscape, uh, they avoid them. If you add cropland to the landscape, you start taking away the habitat they have for, for liking and for nesting, and, the, and predators get introduced. In the near future, we, NRCS will be developing a strategy plan to, to meld the sage grouse initiative dollars into the North Dakota Game and Fish Department sage grouse plan. Declining habitat and sage grouse populations prompted a study of the bird by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Well, in the spring of uh, 2010, the greater sage grouse was listed as a candidate species under the Endangered Species Act with Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, because of that, the NRCS put, developed a sage grouse initiative to help put habitat on the land for the, the bird. As a candidate species, the sage grouse is proposed for, but not yet listed as threatened or endangered. Many people are working together to reduce threats to sage grouse habitat, increase population numbers, and keep the sage grouse from being added to the threatened or endangered species list. We're trying to develop a partnership with all the, all the stakeholders, including the landowners. The landowners are working uh, together, uh, a group that they've created called GRASS, uh, which is a local working group for helping the sage grouse and, and helping each other understand what the needs of the sage grouse are. So that they, and also helps up for the agencies to work with those landowners. Partnership efforts are widespread. Um, NRCS, the Bowman Slope Soil Conservation District, has been um, a great supporter of the whole initiative and of getting a local work group started within this area. Um, the local work group itself, the GRASS group, will become an important partner. Other partners that we've been working with are North Dakota Game and Fish, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, BLM, Forest Service, and the list does go on and on. 
um, many more partners keep coming to the table each time we have a meeting. Um, and the efforts of all them combined are, are going to be what makes this a success. It seems to me they've outreached even to us ranchers to get some input on, on how things should go forward. And I think that's important to, uh, to get landowners to want to buy in on anything. Um, I think their input's valuable. One of the things we're kind of concentrating on the group is trying to bring education in that ranchers can, can uh, go to and, and adapt and hopefully come up with some ways that they can make their place more profitable and that we can leave an environment that's conducive to uh, populations coming back. So we work with all those agencies as a partnership to uh, take a look at the threats to the bird so and the resource concerns so we can work with ways to alleviate those threats. We also work together on a long-range plan and how NRCS can use its Sage Grouse Initiative dollars to uh, work within the realms of the North Dakota Game and Fish Department strategy plan to, uh, to promote and to protect uh, sage grouse. Agriculture is important in keeping large segments of sage grouse range unfragmented. Livestock producers that manage the quality of their soil and forage resources through grazing systems, range plantings, cover crops, and other practices improve sage grouse habitat as well as their own bottom line. Agriculture is important in terms of land, ranchers keeping their rangeland as rangeland with cattle on the landscape. Uh, the big sage or sage sage grouse can uh, coexist with with ranchers very well. Uh, a planned grazing system that re leaves residual habitat, uh, residual cover such as grasses with the big sage is excellent for nesting and, and brood habitat, and it also is good for the rancher for a return on the dollar. Yeah, anytime we can get cattle cross fences and water and, and things, we can better manipulate the vegetation we have out here for the benefit of the cattle and for, and we can end up leaving more uh, habitat for the birds and other animals too. So we can preserve these landscapes. Uh, I think uh, species like the sage grouse have a better chance to survive and if we've got viable ranches and families out here working them, um, if we can keep it profitable, you'll keep young people coming in. Hopefully they'll be raising families and that can translate on down to schools and, and businesses. NRCS is working on a, a sage hen project down here and, and we've utilized some cost share money with them to do different things. We put some bird ramps and tanks uh, going. We've done some going forward. We're going to put a, a solar pumping unit and run a pipeline that helps in cattle distribution in some pastures. Um, I think it's a really good program. I've got some neighbors that have, have gotten some use out of it and I, I think it's going to, in the long run, improve sage hen habitat, um, make uh, ranching a little more profitable here and I think it's a good deal. So They're looking at it and saying we need to take this opportunity to improve the habitat for the sage grouse and at the same time that should improve it for our business. NRCS is an agency of the U.S. Department of Agriculture that helps producers on a voluntary basis to manage their lands in a way that improves their natural resources. Through the Sage Grouse Special Initiative, NRCS uses expertise of rangeland specialists and cost share funding to help ranchers improve the quality of sagebrush landscapes for sage grouse habitat. NRCS is here. We're providing financial and technical assistance um, to help improve their grazing operation. And in theory, if we, uh, if we work to improve their grazing operation, the birds should come along with the improved rangeland health. We're helping put out uh, fence lines uh, for grazing systems, water developments that can be tanks and troughs, uh, converting uh, uh, power lines to solar panels so we don't have the perching habitat for predators that may impact sage grouse. There's a lot of different uh, threats to sage grouse in western North Dakota and across their range. So we're looking at those threats and trying to figure out how we can uh, decrease the threats. Not only has the Sage Grouse Initiative been successful, but a lot of our other programs um, can tie right into it. They're taking advantage of all the programs and putting together a package deal that will work for their operation. And that might be GRP, it might be WIP. We have many programs available that they can take the opportunity to check into and hopefully use on their operation. 
For more information about sage grouse habitat and the sage grouse special initiative, visit www.nd.nrcs.usda.gov.